We begin with the coronavirus developments this Easter Sunday. A plane carrying 112 Aussies and New Zealanders arrives in Melbourne. Up to 80 people are infected with the coronavirus. Churches to be empty this morning as services go online due to social distancing rules. National Cabinet is getting medical advice on how and when to ease restrictions. New York's death rate stabilises, but at a horrific level. Britain records another 24-hour death toll above 900, as Boris Johnson's office says he's making very good progress. And the Queen rec records her very first Easter message, saying that we need Easter now more than ever. This morning, the global infection rate is more than 1.7 million people, while more than 106,000 have died. Here in Australia, there are 6,303 confirmed COVID cases, with the number killed rising to 56. In New South Wales, 2,857 people have tested positive. In Victoria, that number is 1,265. And in Queensland, 974 confirmed cases. Western Australia, it's 514. South Australia has 429 positive tests. And in Tasmania, there have been 133. And looking at the ACT, recorded 103, 28 in the Northern Territory. In breaking news, a Mercy flight carrying 80 coronavirus infected Australians has just touched down in Melbourne. Here's a live shot of Tullamarine Airport where you can see emergency services are on standby. And we have a team of reporters with the very latest on the coronavirus pandemic. But first, let's go to Tegan Dolling, who's at the airport. Tegan, an enormous operation underway there. Good morning, Matt. There sure is. As you just said, the plane has touched down here in Melbourne after a 16-hour flight from Uruguay. On board, more than 100 Australians, and it's understood at least 80 of them are infected with COVID-19. Now, they have been on the Greg Mortimer cruise ship. They were meant to be going around Antarctica, but they have been anchored uh, off the Uruguay coast for some time now. And finally, after a number of mercy calls to the Australian government, they have finally landed back here in Melbourne. What happens now? It's a huge mission to make sure that no one here in the public comes into contact with them. So every person who steps off that plane will be assessed by a doctor. Those who are sick will be taken by an ambulance to two of our main hospitals that are on standby for an influx of patients. Those who are OK will now head off to a hotel isolation. They have to stay there for 14 days and they will not be allowed back in society until that happens. It seems that uh, our state government has learnt from the Ruby Princess debacle. Let's hope so. All right, Samantha Brett is at St Mary's Cathedral in Sydney. Now, Sam, Easter Sunday looking incredibly different. The churches are pretty much empty. Yeah, that's right, Mon. Good morning. Certainly a sombre scene here outside St Mary's Cathedral this morning. Usually at this time, it is brimming with people all getting very excited for that Easter Sunday service. Today, though, uh, everyone, the congregation has been told to stay at home. And there are scenes like this, not only here in Sydney, but right across the country and indeed right across the world. The last time that we saw Easter Sunday church services cancelled, well, that was back in 1919 during the Spanish flu. Uh, the difference, though, 100 years on is of course social media so many of the services right across the country will be streamed online today uh, and this service here at St Mary's Cathedral well that will be streamed live and free on Channel 7 at 10 30 this morning right after sunrise some good news though Mon and Matt what isn't cancelled is the Easter Bunny uh, the supermarkets are still open today so plenty of time to get those last minute Easter eggs guys wonderful news indeed Jennifer Beshwadi is at Federal Park Parliament. Jen, experts are right now weighing up when to loosen these coronavirus restrictions. Yeah, morning, Mon. Morning, Matt. That's right. Experts are looking at ways to ease these strict social distancing rules in, in place as the number of new cases nationally drop to just single digits. It's all about kicking the economy back into gear whilst not putting lives at risk. The borders will be closed for a while. There's no plans to reopen anytime soon. In fact, it could stay closed until the end of the year. What they're looking at is allowing restaurants, parks and even beaches to reopen to begin with, 
with social distancing rules like standing two metres apart still in place. However, the panel of medical experts all agree that now is not the right time. The conversations are, are happening at the moment. Uh, whether we get to a point in the near future of cases getting down to single digits, again, the, the virus, as has been said so many times, often sets its own timeline. So we just have to wait and see uh, if and when we get to that position. Now, the focus for the government today is university funding. An announcement will be made to guarantee funding for universities at the current levels, even if there is a fall in student numbers. This is providing certainty to the sector and also to be announced today, a new six-month course, an online course, available under the government's fee help. It's a new certificate that will be offered in areas of national priority at the moment, such as nursing, teaching, IT, counselling and even science. So for those stuck at home, isolating and bored, why not learn a new skill that will help you on the other side? Keep you from eating the eggs, that's for sure. All right, Sarah Greenold, she's in London. Now, Sarah, the Queen has delivered an Easter message for the very first time during her reign. Mon, good morning. For the first time in her 68-year reign, that's right, the Queen decided to write this message with all the churches obviously being closed on what is the most significant weekend in the Christian calendar. It is now the second time she has spoken publicly about the pandemic after that historic address to the nation that she made last Sunday. This Easter message was recorded at Windsor Castle and the Queen draws on her own faith to essentially reassure the nation, telling people that even though this Easter will be very different, if we all stay apart, we will We'll be keeping each other safe. Take a listen. We know that coronavirus will not overcome us. As dark as death can be, particularly for those suffering with grief, light and life are greater. May the living flame of the Easter hope be a steady guide as we face the future. That message of hope is so needed here in the UK right now. Another 917 people have lost their lives in the past 24 hours. The UK's death toll is close to 10,000. And among the latest victims is an 11-year-old child and several nurses who had been on the front line. The Prime Minister, meanwhile, Boris Johnson, he is spending his seventh night in hospital, but Downing Street says he is making very good progress. We understand he is now communicating with his pregnant fiance, And the Prime Minister has reportedly told friends that he owes his life to the doctors who cared for him in intensive care. They're doing such an incredible job. To Paul Kadak now in New York City. Paul, the death rate there, while it's stabilising, but still horrific. Good morning, Matt. Yeah, that's right. The United States has just had the deadliest day of any country so far during this crisis, with more than 2,000 coronavirus deaths in just 24 hours. The death toll in this country has doubled in the last week. It is now more than 20,000, and for the first time today, past Italy's death toll. But here in New York State, where almost half those deaths have occurred, there are still some hopeful signs. For the first time, the number of people on ventilators actually actually fell, if only by a little bit. Here's the state's governor, Andrew Cuomo. Good news is the curve of the increase is continuing to flatten. The number of hospitalizations uh, appears to have hit an apex, and the apex appears to, have, to be a plateau. The death rate here has stabilised, but he says at a horrific rate. Another 783 deaths just yesterday. That death rate has now been over 700 a day for the last five days. Also here in the United States, a bit of an Easter Sunday showdown is looming between some churches and officials. Now, in most states, churches have been uh, told they should be closed. Most are closed uh, anyway to help with social distancing, to help to stop the spread of the virus. But one Louisiana mega church says it expects some 2,000 people to turn up at its Easter Sunday service. And in Kentucky, police will be taking down the licence plates of anyone who turns up to a mass gathering and they'll be sent notices to quarantine themselves for 14 days. Extraordinary times. All right, listen, thanks everyone to the whole team. You're bringing us some really important information every day. It's just mind-boggling, isn't it?